Mr. Clampett, you're just in time to have your picture taken with the queen of the banker's ball. Oh, no, thank you. I'd like to get one, Mr. Clampett. Come on, Pa. Well, if you sure it won't bust your camera. <laughs> That's it. Very nice. Now, on the count of three. One, two. That's it. What happened to three? My finger slipped. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Wait a minute. I want some shots of me for the front page of the banker's journal. You were robbed, Miss Slocum. You should have won that beauty contest. But, Mr. Cushing, Ellie Mae Clampett is... Ellie Mae Clampett! She doesn't even work in Drysdale's bank. Her father just keeps his 45 million there. And what is more, you are 10 times prettier than she is. Oh, now, really? You just wait till that Bankers Association luncheon today. I'm going to raise the roof. Then drop it right on Drysdale's head. <laughs> what is it? Mr. Cushing, uh, could Miss Slocum come out and do some double knot spying with me? Not today, <laughs> Jethro. We're busy. Well, then, can my Uncle Jed just come in and say howdy? Jethro, you heard what the man said. He's busy. Now, come on. Uh, no! Wait! <laughs> <laughs> now, come in! Come in, sir! <laughs> well, Mr. Clampett, uh, I've been wanting to meet you, sir. This is a real pleasure. Uh, thank you. Uh, you know, I was just saying that your daughter certainly deserved to win that beauty contest. <laughs> well, I don't think so. Miss Slocum's a heap prettier than Cousin Ellie. Oh, no, no, Miss Slogan is a nice, wholesome girl, but Ellie Mae Clampett, one of the world's great beauties. Yeah, we just come over to see how sorry we are there couldn't be two winners. Now, Miss Slocum is right pretty, and Jethro's right took with her. Uh, well, Miss Slocum is right took with Jethro. <laughs> uh, aren't you? Uh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, dog! Hey, listen, Uncle Jeff. Uh, this bank is a heap more fun than Mr. Drysdale's. Well, why don't you keep your money here? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's uh, something to think about. Uh, but I wouldn't want you coming over and uh, making a nuisance of yourself. A, a nuisance, Jethro? <laughs> <laughs> I love having him, yeah. Uh, here, my boy, let me have your hat. <laughs> <laughs> is it uh, hurt bad? Heck no, it's made of iron. <laughs> Uh, come over and sit down. Let's talk. Oh, we got to be getting home. Granny's cooking up something special. Say, why don't you and Miss Slocum take new and vittles with us? How about that, Mabel? Well, Mr. Cushing has to attend a lunch. At Mr. Clampett's house. Oh, we'd love to come. <laughs> I'll pleasure Granny a heap. She loves to have company on Groundhog Day. She sure does. Well, we'll be looking for you. Yeah, no, well, we'll be there. Bye. Goodbye, sir. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Groundhog Day is the 2nd of February. Miss Slocum, when a man with $45 million says it's Groundhog Day, it's Groundhog Day. I don't care if it's the 4th of July. Yes, sir. Oh, boy, and Drysdale thinks he's going to a banker's luncheon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Ellie may deserve to be queen, all right. She's a real beauty. <laughs> And now that I have met you, I see where she got it. Oh, Mr. Cush. No, it's true. It's true. <laughs> well, now, uh, which would you rather do, wash or dry? Oh, no, no. Your company, you ain't gonna hit with the dishes. I'd like to. Oh, nothing doing. You probably get enough of that at home, helping your wife. Oh, I haven't got a wife. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I have no wife. I've never married. What would you rather do, wash or dry? <laughs> Granny, you ain't fixing to let Mr. Cushion wash the dishes, are you? Oh, I don't mind. It's all right, Jed. What are you, nothing of the kind? Mr. Cushion is company. It's all right, Jed. <laughs> oh, I help with the dishes. Besides, Mr. Cushion got a bank to tend to. It's all right, Jed. Hey, you wouldn't want to be responsible for Mr. Cushion neglecting his bank, would you? It's all right, Jed. I assure you, sir, I am not neglecting my bank. <laughs> See, Mr. Cushing don't get a chance to wash dishes at home. He ain't married. <laughs> he ain't got no wife. <laughs> He's single. Come in. I came by to pay off our bet, but your secretary's gone. Oh, yeah, she's out driving the queen around. Talk to you later, Fred. 
The loser just walked in. <laughs> well, John, we certainly miss you at the luncheon today. Your office said you're out working on a new account. That's right. Oh, I made a few jokes about it at the luncheon, but... All well, sincerity, good luck. I hope you'll land it. Well, thank you, Milburn. I'm, I'm going to do my best. Uh, here's your check. Well, now that's all over, I'll tell you something. I gave you a little low shot there because Ellie doesn't really work for me. But you know the saying, all it's fair in love, war, and banking. I never heard that. Who said it? I did. <laughs> and it's a good one to remember when you're up against the champ. <laughs> oh, probably another of my fans going. <laughs> How about dinner tonight? I can't. I'll be out hustling a new account. <laughs> good for you. A big one? The biggest. <laughs> nah, couldn't be. Well, Jim, what about it? You gonna put your money in Mr. Cushing's bank? I'm studying on it, Granny. What's they to study on? Well, I can't just take my money out of Mr. Drysdale's bank without a good reason. I'll give you plenty of reasons. Has Mr. Drysdale ever took us out like Mr. Cushing done last night? Has Mr. Drysdale ever brung me a orchid? <laughs> Has Mr. Drysdale ever danced with me like Mr. Cushing done? <laughs> well, no, Granny, but uh, Mr. Drysdale's got a wife. Mr. Cushing's a single man. There's the best reason of all. <laughs> Lucky who's here to see you. Good morning. Good morning. I hope you'll forgive my barge again like this, Mr. Clampett. <laughs> Well, no, uh, glad to see you. Sit down. No, 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 no. I just happened to see these American beauties in the florist's window. And they reminded me of the roses in your cheeks. <laughs> oh, Mr. Cushing. <laughs> John. Mr. Cushing brought me a box of candy. I'm going to share it with Cousin Bessie. Cousin Bessie? Well, I'm sorry. I didn't know about Cousin Bessie. She could have joined us for dinner last evening. <laughs> well, her table manners ain't too good yet. Yes, yeah, she keeps picking up the fork with her feet. <laughs> and, uh, well, uh, I'd better be getting back to my bank. Oh, and uh, speaking of my bank, I hope you have given some consideration to what we discussed last evening. We've been talking about it. And Jed is ready to put his money in your bank. Now, hold on, Granny. I said I'd study on it. Oh, now that's right, Mr. Clambert. You think it over carefully, sir. Oh, I'll see you to the door, John. You wait for me in the pantry. Yes, Goodbye, Mr. Clambert. Well, Jed, how about it? Well, uh, Randy, I said I'm going to have to study on this and have a long talk with Mr. Gray, do you? Ah. <laughs> Jed. Ain't you always told me that part of that money was mine? That's right, one quarter. One quarter? Twenty-five cents out of all of them millions? <laughs> I mean one-fourth all I got. Well, here comes Jethro. You have him cipher it out. Because I'm going to put my money in Mr. Cushing's bank. <laughs> Jethro got my ciphering done? Not yet, Granny. And... <laughs> Jethro, sit down and get a pencil and paper. You want what? I want my share of Jed's money. Jethro said it's somewheres around eleven million dollars. <laughs> now, what in the world would you do with eleven million dollars? That's for me to know and you to find out. <laughs> now, let's have it. In here? In here. Granny, have you been at your rheumatism medicine again? No, I ain't. Get your finger out of my face and commence giving me my money. Oh, well. All right. Yeah, all right. Now, if you need any more, you just let me know. How much was that? Thirty dollars. Well, I'm letting you know I need more. <laughs> Why don't you let Miss Hathaway drive you home, eh? Mr. Drysdale, are you going to give me my money or ain't you? Of course. Now, you run along. I'll drop by this evening and we'll talk about it. Excuse me. Glad to see you, Chief. Oh, good. What are you doing here? Ellie told me what you was up to. Well, I'll tell you something that she ain't told you. Mr. Drysdale won't give me my money. He's been slippery footing around here like a hog on ice. <laughs> if you ask me, he ain't got it. Granny didn't mean that, Mr. Drysdale. <laughs> I understand. I know where you got the money. No apologies necessary, Mr. Clavitt. 
Now, we won't take up no more of your time. Thank you. Just give her the money and we'll go. Eleven million dollars? Whatever one-fourth of all I got comes to, that's her share. <laughs> See? He ain't got it. Randy, you got the money, ain't you, Mr. Drysdale? Of course, but... Well, then, go ahead and give it to her. Well, all right, I'll... I'll have a check drawn up. Hold it right there. I don't want no check. I want my money. Cash. <laughs> Cash? Cash! We do favor cash. But I haven't got 11 million. You see, I told you, he spent it. He ain't got it. If you ask me, you've been slickered, Jim. Now, Granny, how much have you got, Mr. Drysdale? Possibly two or three hundred thousand in the ball. That's all you got left out of my 45 million? And I've got all of your money. Well, where is it? Well, it's invested. Stocks, bonds, loans, primary, secondary securities. That slicker talk a lie ever heard it. Mr. Drysdale, you always told me I had 45 million in cash. Well, you have. But it's not cash, cash. <laughs> like I said, it's invested. I've got it spread out all over the country. Well, maybe you better start getting it together. <laughs> it would ease my mind considerable to see it. Great Scott, man. It would take weeks and weeks and weeks to get 45 million in cash. You don't understand. See, Mr. Cushing? Told you they was here. They used to have a double knot spy working for you, don't it? <laughs> Indeed it does. John, Mr. Drysdale won't give us our money. Really? Well, we'll see about that. <laughs> You're behind this, Cushing, you pirate. Control yourself, Milburn. To quote the champ, all is fair in love, war, and banking. <laughs> now let's get busy and transfer that account, shall we? Oh, it was beautiful, Harry. Beautiful. <laughs> I left Drysdale on the field of battle a broken man. <laughs> Come in. Howdy. Oh, I'll talk to you later. Howdy, John. Howdy, Mr. Cushing. Well, hello. Hello. Come in. Come in. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> well, what could I... What could I do for you? Did you get our 45 million for Mr. Drydale? Every cent of it. It's all safe and sound right in the Merchant's Bank. Well, that's dandy. Uh, we'd like to see it. <laughs> in cash. Uh, I haven't got it. <laughs> well, Granny? No, he didn't go through it quicker than Mr. Drysdale. <laughs> I think we'd be better off back with him. <laughs> Wait, come back. Let me explain. No, no, you see, it's all invested. I have it in stock. <laughs> 